Hey everyone, Ryan with another kitchen cabinet painting follow along here. And in this video, you're going to see me filling the oak grain as I'm doing right here on a set of client cabinets. And then I'm going to show you how I prep off the insides of the cabinets, how I set up to spray. And speaking of spraying, this one's kind of interesting. Um, I've gotten some comments about my um, expensive sprayer and can I get the same finish with a cheap sprayer so I ordered a Wagner Flexio 5000 and I got it it's still in the box for this job I pulled the tape off to do this job and you will have to watch till the end of the video to see how I liked it how it turned out and everything like that and if you are one of the amazing people who watches the entire video Please make a comment. I love hearing when people watch all 16 minutes of these because uh, that's just crazy to me. Here's a close-up of the grain filler as it's starting to dry. This is a simple grain filler. You can check out a link in the description below to see how I make it. And right now I'm going ahead and prepping the insides of the cabinets. I line three sides of it with tape and then I use a 3M masking machine to put the plastic in on the other end. And then it's just a matter of going around, tucking it everywhere and trying to get it to be as tight and you know, uh, not wavy as possible so that it doesn't blow around and hit the cabinets after I'm done spraying them. All right, we got the plastic up, but we do want this plastic as tight as we can make it because when we're spraying, if it's loose, it's gonna fly around, you see like, this little corner up here is kind of loose. It's always good to put a little extra tape where you need to to kind of make sure it doesn't flap up on your, uh, your cabinet while you're spraying. So I guess I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit in the video and narrate over. Well, it's what you get in this video. But here you see me uh, finally get smart and realize, oh, I can just take the top drawer out and go a little bit quicker. Sometimes you're just not thinking and you do things the hard way when the easy way is staring you right in the face. But you can see I just line the tape around everywhere and then I pull around, tuck it in and try to keep as much of the excess plastic on the back side so that it's not <laughs> flapping out and coming and hitting my project as I'm spraying and have wet paint. And just drop the drawer back in and that cabinet is good to go. All done. Voila. This center island, I decided this is where I was going to mix up some paint and do a little bit of work on, almost a little workbench in the, in the uh, kitchen. So I put a little bit of rosin paper over it just to give it a little extra durability. And then just lined it with uh, tape frog tape my uh, favorite tape of choice it never leaves any residue behind holds beautifully and it's just the absolute best tape I've used so far so. and here you see not only am I setting up uh, a plastic wall with zip lines but I am sporting my incredible half uh, or my incredible cutoff capri sweat paint so if this is a look that you'd like to uh, get for yourself the link to never mind you can't get these pants they're one of a kind but i use my zip wall poles to set up a barrier between my workspace and the rest of the house and you can put a zipper in these if you're going to go through but this place had a door to the garage right behind me so the homeowners just use the front door and i use the garage no need to go in and out and here i'm wrestling with some plastic i actually cut down five minutes of video as i got this all balled up and fought with it over and over until I eventually got the got the refrigerator covered in plastic but it was a uh, one of those things it's just a big sheet of plastic pain in the butt and sometimes you just fight it typically when I'm on a job I don't like filming because I don't like filming and doing work at the same time I just like to get my work done so that's why you don't see a lot of videos from me. But I was able to slow down and get this kitchen going. And I just wanted to show it to you, show you what we're gonna do, show you how I'm gonna spray it and everything that's going on in here. So hopefully it can help out you on your DIY projects a little bit. First thing I did when I came in is I cleaned the kitchen. 
I washed down the floors. They hated it that I was washing their floors, but I told my wash everyone's floors, don't worry about it. And put down my rosin paper, went around the edges, taped everything off. Then I clean all the cabinets. I wash them all down and just scrub everything down. I scrub down the microwave, the stove, everything so that tape sticks to it. Um, they're doing two colors in here, a dark blue on the bottom cabinets, which we're going to do, and a white on the uppers. Now, these are golden oaks, so that means that the grain is going to show through, and I did some video on how I do the grain filler, but you can see that grain, it, it gets in there pretty good, the method we use, and I've got a whole other video on that, and I did some video on this about how I did that. But the reason we do a grain filler on the uppers and not the lowers Every little grain and dot shows as a black shadow, which contrasts the white. Where down here, a dark blue, every little thing, you're not, you're not even going to see cracks like this. I'm going to fill this with caulk anyway, but you, you don't see any of it. It's not a contrast. That dark shadow just goes right into the blue and doesn't show. Another thing is, we wanted to get this kitchen done as fast as possible so that they have as little downtime as possible and they don't have space here and I wasn't going to bring the cabinets anywhere so we wanted to spray them all in place. And the reason we can get away with this is these are hidden hinges and they're replacing the hinges with soft clothes as soon as I'm done painting. They've got all new hinges so I'm going to actually spray these, spray the fronts and then once all the fronts are done I'm going to flip them open and shoot the backs and I'll probably have to go in and do a little bit of touch up here, but getting paint on the hinges is no big deal here. That's perfectly fine. Same with the drawers. We're going to keep them closed, spray the fronts. Um, might have to go in and do a little touch up on the edges, something like that when we're done, but it's not going to be a big deal at all. Um, we got all the appliances prepped off. Later, once we get to the top coat, we're going to spray their doors and stuff, but they're all pre-primed. So I'm just going to spray primer today. And yeah, we're about ready to go. One thing I do, um, not all painters do this the same, but I like to do all my caulking after the primer because once I shoot everything white with primer, I can see all of the gaps that need to be caulked even better. And I think it just works great. So I do it afterwards. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. Today I'm going to just shoot everything primer and get out of here, let it dry overnight. I need to do a little double check before I spray. I see a, I had a little spot here that I need to sand a little bit more. And I normally use a cap spray, um, a Titan cap spray uh, 115 is my sprayer of choice. But I wanted to show that we can get a professional result with a cheap DIY sprayer. This is a Wagner Flexio 5000. It's an HVLP sprayer. And it's like, I, I don't get internet in here, but I believe it's, it's under 200 bucks, just under $200. So if you're doing your kitchen, this is great to invest in, but you need to know how to get a fine finish with it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here today. So uh, I'm gonna put this on the tripod and uh, get working. For this project, my two favorite paints, I'm gonna be using Smart Prime for the primer. This is a hybrid, um, a water encapsulated oil, and this is a hybrid top coat. I like Smart Prime because it seems to do pretty good with the tannins on oak, and any water-based finish or hybrid finish is gonna have a little bit of issue, and you might have to spot prime some of the tannins that bleed through, but we will address that when we get there. And Advance is just one of my favorite uh, top coats and I won't even be getting that today. When I'm mixing my primer for, you see me here? So when I'm mixing my primer, I like to do 20% water to thin it down. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do 24 ounces and then I'll go right up to like the four, which is gonna be, gonna be pretty darn close for water. Still recording? Good. I'm gonna pour that water in. And we're gonna mix her up. Probably need to mix up one more batch of paint, of primer here. But this is enough to get us started. 
We started with thinning at 20%. So we are going to give this a shot. As I'm spraying here, I just want to tell you, um, if you've never sprayed before, find a, a big sheet of cardboard at, or you know a wall that you're going to paint over when you're done anyway. And just practice a little bit getting that trigger pull down. You want to start your movement right before you pull the trigger and let go of the trigger right before your movement stops. It's a little tricky to get figured out right away, but once you do, it, it's it's quite easy so a few big sheets of cardboard and you can really practice and get that motion down so that you're not figuring it out while you're spraying your cabinets and getting runs or anything like that you can see in this first bit I'm kind of getting used to the Flexio 5000 how fast it sprays and everything and I had to go back over a few areas and by the time I got to these cabinets here I felt like I was already flowing good I had a good feel for the sprayer and I was able to just start moving. And I'll tell you right now, I absolutely love this sprayer. I've got another video coming up, you'll have to come back and check it out, but uh, I'll, I'll dive into the sprayer a lot deeper and it's going to be entirely dedicated to the sprayer and how to use a sprayer like the Flexio 5000 or any one of those, you know, sub $200 sprayers or 222 and how you can actually spray your cabinets and get a beautiful finish with them. So make sure to check back for that. It's already in progress. Hopefully you'll have it up soon. As I said earlier, these clients are actually, well, they were actually going to replace their hinges as soon as I was done. They wanted some slow close and they had very little space and they needed their kitchen back as quickly as possible. So an idea was to just go ahead and spray the doors in place. You had to be very careful so they didn't touch each other when they're open, as you can see those two right there. But it was a very quick way to spray the cabinets. I could spray the fronts and the backs without even taking them off, which saved me quite a bit of work. And it turned out beautiful, no issues. Just have to be careful about if the fronts are still wet. This was primer, so it actually dries pretty quick, but when you're spraying the top coat, it stays wet longer. So you have to be really careful when you're opening them. Anyway, I'm done with the primer. Let's take a look, then I'm out of here till tomorrow. So we missed a little footage right here, but um, I'm spraying the first coat right here. But before I did this, I went around and sanded everything with 3M extra fine sanding sponges, vacuumed everything, and then I spent about 30 minutes caulking everything. And I'll do a video on the caulking in the future. It's a, it's There's some definite ways you can get a finer bead, get it to look better and not make a big mess. But I'm using Benjamin Moore Advance here, and I thinned down the top coat by 20%, exact same thing I did to the primer, and just dove right in. After watching my video back of this project, um, I think you're gonna see a name change of DIY painting tips, and instead it's gonna be Ryan's Fashion Tips. Because, I mean, socks with, uh, Crocs, socks and Crocs with Hawaiian shorts, cut off Capri sweatpants. Who wouldn't watch that, right? Well, let me know, let me know, and uh, may maybe that's in my future. Maybe not, but you know, maybe. I'm gonna leave the door open. Here I switched to the navy blue, and like I said earlier, you can't see that there's no grain filler down here because it's so dark. So that's definitely a way you can save a little bit of time on your own project and it turned out great homeowners loved it and you'll see a final picture at the end of this video
Like I said, there's no video of spraying the top coat, but I can promise you it looks exactly like this, only it's blue on blue, so it's even a little less satisfying than watching blue go over white. But that about wraps up this video. Here's a little bit of a, a close up of the final project as I was starting to pull down the prep work, just getting a little close up of the cabinets, a little close up of the lowers, and then. Uh, yeah, and there it is. Everything turned out absolutely great. The Flexio 5000 is a wonderful sprayer. I've got a link to it in the description below. Check it out. You can use it on cabinets, furniture, decks, fences, whatever. It's a fantastic sprayer, and I'd highly recommend it for anyone who has any DIY painting projects. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. And have a great one.